Hey, happy Tuesday, everyone. It's Kelly here. This week, we're going to play with some watercolors. We're going to be creating these watercolor roses. So if you want to see how I do these and we do this really quick as a warm up, stick around and I will show you how. Hey, everyone, it's Kelly here. It's um, got my coffee here. It's really rainy outside. And I thought I'd talk to you a little bit today um, about if you're one of those people that always thought that you can't draw sick or you know you feel like everything that you do is just not as good as what you've seen out there maybe you watch the tutorial and you're always comparing your work to theirs um, or is there like a little devil on your shoulder that sits there with you and says that you suck <laughs> you're never gonna be any good at this or you can't draw a stick figure um, so those are all the things that go on, went on in my head when I first started. My mother is an artist and she's a really good artist. So I thought those things myself, I think it's a really normal thing, especially when you're an artist, you usually have that very creative uh, side to you. So my question to you today is, tell me what is holding you back from enjoying your art experience or your creativity. So leave me a comment down below. So today what I'd like to show you is, speaking of creativity, is how to paint uh, some little roses, really simple roses. You can follow along and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Special thanks to Lisa. She uh, sent me some wonderful watercolors, some more um, Cotman watercolors that I'd love to use. So um, thanks Lisa and uh, stick around and I'll show you the details. Hi, I'm Kelly Chassie. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I have new videos every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you click that subscribe button, click the little bell, and you'll never miss one. I also have full monthly online classes and tutorials on my website at www.kellychassiefineart.com. And I do have over 10,000 students and over 15 years of experience teaching art classes. So if you have a chance, head over to my website and check them out. So if you're here today, you want to learn how to create some very simple, easy watercolor roses. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you have been here for a while, you guys know that I paint quick. This uh, whole warm up thing that I do is just about playing. It's, um, you can see I don't do a lot of in depth <laughs> planning beforehand. And I'm quick. So if you want to slow it down, you can always go ahead and slow down the video. I'll and if you are not familiar how to do that, all you have to do is click on this little wheel down at the bottom and you can change the speed, you can slow it down or you can speed it up and then just make sure um, to click it back to normal when you <laughs> want to go back to the normal way of listening to me or else I'll sound either like a chipmunk or very slow. <laughs> The key to this is, and the challenge of this, is just to paint very playful and don't get too caught up in the details. And that's how I like to teach. That's how I like you to learn, especially when you're first starting out. So these are what I call warm-up paintings. They're quick, they're fast, they're easy, and you don't, you don't have to do a whole lot of planning for these. And these are a great way for you to begin painting without that fear, so just having fun. So the colors I'm using today are Cotman Watercolors Rose Matter Hue number 580, and that's in series one. That's for the main part of the rose, and then I'm also using Cotman's Watercolor Lizarin Crimson Hue 003 series 1A. That is for the darker values of our flower, and then for the green, I have some Grumbacher Olive Green Hue, and that is... Um, what I'm going to be using for the leaves for this one. And then I decided to do a little bit of a yellow rose, more of a yellow pink. So I'm adding a little bit of the yellow ochre. And then I also use just a little touch of cadmium yellow pale hue. And that's 119 also from the Cotman series. And if you watched last week's um, flower tutorial that we did. I use these same brushes. I love these brushes. If you want to check out last week's uh, tutorial, I'll put the link up here on the top right hand corner in case you missed that where we did a little bit of more of a Johnny jump up or a violet type flower. So 
again, you can see here how fast I'm painting. I'm just getting in at that circular motion or that shape of a rose. And I'm doing a little bit of wet and wet here. As I decided I didn't like that color yellow quite so much. So I'm adding some more of the reds to this. Still using the rose color. And this makes beautiful uh, multicolor rose by adding just a little bit of those. And it gives you some really nice darker values in here. Still using those nice warm tones. You will notice I'm not filling the entire rose in. I'm leaving those little bit of white spaces to give those natural highlights in your flower. So I add a little bit of that alizarin crimson to this just to get a little bit darker shade in here really make that pop. Some of this area is, is dried now. This is still really wet, so you can see where you get that really beautiful soft blending where it's wet and if you wait for this to dry, you're gonna get more of a sharper line where it's not going to blend quite as nicely. Again, another reason why I like to work fast and work wet into wet. I'm going to rinse off my brush. I've got some clean water over here. And let's go ahead and switch now to a little bit smaller brush. This is the size 8. And I'm going to put a little bit of that green in here. I'm doing all of the still wet and wet very lightly. And we're just going to make that nice little leaf shape. I'm trying not to touch the flowers too much because that they are wet. So that's going to bleed into the pink that we have down here. So just keep that in mind if yours is really wet. It does give a nice look. If you looked at last week's, I did touch the green to the color and let them blend as well. So you can see where it's happening just a little bit down here on the bottom. As I went back in and added some more depth to that, some darker values. And again, just filling up some of this little white space area, just with a few little leaves. I'm adding a little bit of that red to it. It will give you a nice little more of a brown shade, a darker stem for the underneath. And sometimes those roses will have more of that greenery on the underside here. I'm not seeing it much here. Just the way the angle of the flower is. So I'm going to bring that up and over. Didn't like that, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the darker color in here. Again, just getting some stroke marks around to give that rounded shape to the flower. And that one's just a little too light for me, so I'm going to darken these up just a little bit more. Again, just making that circular shape. And you can see here as I continue to add just a few more darker flowers. I, I'm not much of a pastel person, I guess. I always tend to, I get the light in there. It just feels like it's not enough for me and I tend to darken. But that's just my style. If you like those light, light pastel shades, um, you don't have to add the darker values to that. Just let it go very natural. Always about you and your style. You will develop your own style. The more you paint, you will decide what you like, what you don't like, and that becomes a part of you. So here I go again with some of the darker greens. Again, it was just too light for me. Let's add a couple little stems in here. We did something similar to this last week. I'm just adding a little bit of green here and there. I 
So, what do you guys think? Quick, easy warm up flour. I'm going to go ahead and dry this. I'm using my, instead of my um, blow dryer, I'm using my heat gun. And now I'm taking my very fine brush. This is the size four. Once that's dried, you can see how it does lighten up anyway, even when I had some of those really dark colors in there. Um, and then once this is dry, I can put a few very sharp final details. Ooh, that one's a little dark there, but that's okay. Just rounding that out a little bit more. Let's blend that. I didn't really like that. Oh, now I just got a little bit of green in there. See, you know, it's always a challenge. If you don't like it, wet it. And you can lift this out with a little tissue. I always like to show you guys that. There we go. A little bit better. So if you do mess up a little area, you know, take your tissue, lift it up, and then you can always go back in. Now, if I was smart, I would probably dry this, but again, we're just doing the warm-up painting, and I just want to show you roughly how, how I work and the speed of it just to get you in the flow. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. Please make sure, once again, to hit that like button and share. Sharing is caring. And if you guys have some ideas of what you want to see for next week, I think I'm going to do an alcohol ink. And I'm really excited. I have a new product I'm going to uh, be posting on Instagram uh, this week. And I'm going to be working on it. It's a new alcohol ink board. And they send them to me. And I'm going to share that information with you coming up. So uh, thanks again. I hope you guys have a creative week and don't forget to tag me on Instagram. If you try these roses out, I would love to see them and maybe share them in next week's video. Oh, and before we go, I do want to share our Tuesday tag. This is from Olive Blooms Design. She did the Skillshare class with the um, crystals and I will give you a link down below if you want to give this a try. I do have this offered on my website right now and I would love to see your crystals. So have a great week and I will see you next Tuesday. Take care, everyone.